everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm JT and today uh, you're gonna be coming with me as we set up a DSLR camera trap for an otter if we're lucky. So come with me. Okay, so like I said before, we're on our way to set up a DSLR camera trap. This is kind of a, like a spur of the moment thing. I was just here in this area yesterday with a dog just walking them. And I was actually trying to find a spot that I noticed from the water when I was paddling here a couple of weeks before. It's a really nice like camping spot and I just wanted to you know, find out uh, how to get to it by land. And so we were walking on a, on a river bank yesterday with the dogs and first we found like a really fresh and uh, obviously quite used uh, fox den and then maybe a hundred meters uh, you know away from that also on the river bank there was a huge badger set I think there was like eight holes or something like that and one of them was right in into the riverbank, you know, and I kind of, my th th first thought was it must be an otter, and when I got close to it, I really, with otters, you can, they have like a distinct fishy kind of a smell, and I checked it out, and for sure there's an otter in there, and then I decided that I'm gonna uh, set up a DSLR camera trap to find out for sure, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Okay, so this is the, the spot that I've been looking for um, yesterday and um, it's, as you can see, you know, it's a really nice spot, you can do some camping here or canoeing or stuff like that and the otter den is just upstream maybe 200 meters or something like that so we're gonna go check it out but first we're gonna see what kind of gear I brought with me and uh, what I'm gonna do with it and the dogs are having a blast Okay, <clears throat> so we're gonna take a look at the gear over here um, because you know when we get to the to the den site we want to move as fast as possible we don't have everything ready um, so that we can get out of there as uh, quickly as possible to disturb the animal the least amount so I have two bags here um, the big one floor one is water Hey, van is water. Flo. She just, she's crazy. The, the, the small dog, the black one, she's crazy about water. And that's okay, but the only thing is, once she gets really excited, she just starts yapping around. So I hope you can hear me over the, over the sound of that. So we got two bags. We got the, the, the large one, which is my camera gear. Um, camera gear that I use for this video and also some of the gear that I use for um, the camera trap. These are just some different lenses for video, the 51.8 and the 75 to 300. I've got some uh, sample bags in here. This is something that I always carry with me. It's um, to gather samples for DNA analysis if we find some interesting animals. Sometimes when I'm in uh, environments like that I gather uh, scat from wolves or from bears or stuff like that and um, then I can give them to the scientists that do the, the, the DNA analysis. And this is a small camera that I have with me for time lapses and stuff like that and it's also waterproof so it's really useful. Um, and then I have latex gloves 
for when I'm uh, handling the camera around the, the dance side. It's a sensitive area. I want to leave as little scent as possible. So that's what, what the, the gloves are for. And I have a torch and some uh, lens cleaning accessories. Um, so the other bag is actually more important today. And this is the secondary tripod that I'm carrying with me. It's Maybe I'll use it for the camera trap or for the, the time lapse or something like that. This is the external um, housing for the, for the camera trap. It's just to protect it from rain so that rain doesn't pour onto the, onto the lens. So that we get the, the best possible picture quality. Um, and then in here we have the important things. The most important one uh, always when you're out is the, the silver tape. You can just like fix anything with this. Um, and then we have cabling for the flashes. It's normal UTP cable and two homemade flash housings because everything needs to be waterproof. It's usually I leave the, the camera trap outside for at least uh, 10 days, 14 days, some, sometimes even longer uh, depending on the weather. Uh, and then I got just some camouflage and stuff like that. And then I got mounting straps. And the other thing in here is the small camera trap. This one is motion triggered and it's also um, able to, to get footage during the night because it, ha it has a, an infrared light in here and it has an uh, infrared filter. So this is really nice. It's not you know, like uh, broadcast quality or pictures that you can publish in magazines and stuff, but it's a real useful tool to, to getting uh, information uh, from the field. And two flashes. These are the uh, Nikon SB28 flashes, so older flashes, but they're the only one that keep their charge for at least 10 days, depending on outside temperatures. And last but not least, we have the camera trap itself, or this is um, the housing. And inside is the Canon, I think it's a 1200 DSLR, 1200D. Um, and up here we have the, the motion sensor. I don't know if you can see that, I'll, I'll get some close-up shots of that. So the motion sensor and inside is the the Canon body, which you can see here with the uh, Canon to Nikon adapter so that the uh, SB28 flashes are triggered properly. Uh, and the camera is actually, I, I'm a bit embarrassed to not, I, well it, it is a 1200D so I was correct on that. And then we have the 7240 L series uh, Canon wide angle lens which I use uh, with the camera trap. So that's the gear. I'm gonna pack it back up, back up, and we're gonna we're gonna go set it up. Okay. So before I put everything in back into the bag, um, I wanna assemble it um, as far as I can, so that I can then um, put it in place and turn it on and, and leave as fast as possible to cause the minimal amount of stress to the animal. So um, what I do is I take the lens off of autofocus to manual focus and I set the focus to approximately one meter from the sensor and I check all the settings in the camera. So um, I close down the, the shutter as far as it goes and this lens I think it is f22. That is just to get the maximum depth of field because um, even though we, we approximately know where the animal is going to be when it sets off the, the trigger, um, there are still some variables, so you want to have as much depth, depth, depth of field as possible. And I usually leave the ISO around 800 and set the time to 200 of a second. We're going to um, go over the settings um, when we're on the spot specifically and when we have the flashes ready so that we configure everything um, as it's supposed to be. So the camera is then, uh, oh, oh the, um, I forgot the white balance, which often happens, so 
uh, but uh, with white balance it's not so um, such a problem because I always shoot in raw so I can correct it afterward in afterwards in, in post production so the camera is ready to go in I'll just turn it off and I'll put it into the, the casing and there are three cables inside the casing two of them are the cables that run up to the flashes and I'll plug them in right now so that's ready I always uh, test the connection and the third cable is the uh, motion trigger so the motion trigger goes in as well and that's the camera ready so the case is closed and what I do at the end I just check out the connection to the motion trigger on the other end which is okay the motion trigger sensor is off now and I also check the sensitivity to be on maximum and then I'll cover up the this part so this is ready and the next thing is flashlight um, we have two flashlights uh, two flashlights set up this time um, so what I do is I turn the flashlights on and for now I'm gonna uh, leave them on manual settings that's actually the only option with this setup because we have Nikon flashes in the Canon body and I leave them at full power and now we're gonna try to jam them inside the, the housings which is always a bit of a, a struggle and also we need to connect them to the to the cables so bear with me this is now connected to the cable I check again the flash is on so it goes in and now the tricky part is because if you notice now they're like um, at a 90 degree angle and when they're inside they have to be extend it like this and that's the tricky part of getting them into this housing let me see how long it takes me and we're ready with the camera so what I'll do now is just um, turn on the camera and set it off just to see that the, both uh, flashes are working and that the camera is working and all of that so now if I turn on the, the motion uh, sensor they should go off and the camera should go off but the flashes are not working Okay, so I figured out what the problem was and now everything works, but I had like a bit of a, you know, derp moment. Uh, it took me the better time of 10 minutes to figure it out. And at the, in the end, it was the flash firing um, option in the menus was set to disable. I don't know when I did that, but you know, <laughs> In the end I was out of options so I had to check that out as well and um, that turned out to be the case. So um, anywho, uh, the, the flashes are working now. If I set the motion trigger on, they are both supposed to be firing. Of course the camera has to be on as well. So let's see. So both flashes are firing. Um, so now we really are ready. There is a reason that the otter is so seldomly seen. Uh, one of them is that they are mainly nocturnal, so they only come out of the, their holes during the night. And the other one is that they, their holes are actually in thick, brushy places like this that are really hard to reach from anywhere else but from the, the water and it's getting hot but we're almost here I think yeah this is where the, the otter hole is so this is the hole that I've been telling you about you can see the the shape of the hole is much 
flatter. It, it's really flat to flatten down, and that's the, the main dif difference between a fox hole and a, an otter hole. And also yesterday, I, I'll see if I can find it here. Um, I saw some uh, droppings, and that's the the, the most distinct sign uh, of an otter. Their droppings are quite similar to to others. For instance, uh, the pine marten or animals like that, but with one big difference, and that is that if you uh, smell them, they have a distinctly fishy smell, like uh, some rotten fish or something like that. So here's the here's its dropping, and you can see it's right on the on the trail that leads up to the to the hole and uh, I've smelled it yesterday so I'm not gonna do it again it has a fishy smell to it and also if you look at the the dirt around here uh, it's really freshly dug up so I guess uh, there's an otter in here so let's set up the let's set up the camera trap and see what we get set the camera up it took me about half an hour it was a bit longer than I expected but I think the setup is really good and now we're gonna leave it alone for at least 10 days and we're gonna come check it out but what I did in the end I also set up the, the small um, trail camera which is gonna be working for sure and I've only set it in such a way that I can only see the the den side, so the hole and we're gonna be see if something is coming in and out even if we don't get pictures on the DSLR camera trap so we're gonna be we're gonna know what's going on oh and what I forgot to mention before is over here uh, I don't know how well you can see on the camera but there's also a large badger set this is one hole and then there's one over the rotten tree and there are a couple of other ones and they they all seem to be uh, quite well used so this is an interesting area for sure so now let's head back let's get the dogs and let's go home So we're uh, back at the car now, now I can uh, speak a bit louder. Um, so I think I've set the, the trap up really well. I think it's well camouflaged, I think it's in, a, in the right spot, the, everything looks okay. And uh, I'll be back in about 10 days to check it out for the first time. I'll also check out the, the trail camera to see what's going on. Maybe there are some other animals uh, walking by, for instance the, the badgers from the, from the set that I've showed you. So we'll see, uh, fingers crossed, and um, I hope to get some nice pictures. And now it's gonna be fun time for the dogs with the frisbee. <laughs> 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 